Before we get started with this week's show, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of the patrons of the show, including the newest patron, Dan Crouch. Daniel now has access to a private chat, priority for having his questions answered on the show each week, and he'll have access to bonus episodes of the show going forward. I do have one favor to ask of Daniel, though, uh, and it will come with some perks. Uh, if you get Peter on the show, you can have access to all of the Patreon tiers for free for life. That's a promise. And yes, you've probably heard that before, and I understand if you delete your pledge now. I promise I won't be mad. But thank you. Let's get to the show. I think I've embarrassed myself. And really, seriously, thank you. Here we go. You're listening to the Southampton Delivery po po Podcast, a podcast dedicated to the Southampton Football Club and all of the SFC fans. <laughs> If you want to have guarantees, you have to buy a washing machine. Okay, with the scooping, Henry! We don't lose a match, either we win or we learn. And today we learn. Abdacha, Austin! Shot at his It's in field to Mane, 25 yards out. Lovely ball for Pella. Onside, 1-0! Blue foul shot! Bambi on ice. It would be very, very embarrassing to watch. And now, and now, now your, host, your host, Matt Markstone. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Southampton Delivery Podcast, a podcast and newsletter dedicated to the Southampton Football Club and to all of the SOC fans and available right here on SouthamptonDelivery.com. My name is Matt Markstone. I am the host of the show. And no matter where you are, no matter how you may be listening, whether this is your first time or you've been here before, thanks for making the show part of your day. I hope that you enjoy it. And honestly, there's a lot to enjoy on Saturday when Saints took on Swansea and managed to come away with a 7-1 victory. Uh, lots of very nice goals. All the guys that we would have hoped on the score sheet, I think. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty good start to the week. Add to that the fact that Ings and War Prowse are going on international duty for England. There are talks of a contract extension for Ings as well. Of course, there are things that maybe uh, aren't so great, and Saints had to switch uh, sponsors look for a new sponsor after LD Sports and that deal kind of uh, fell apart. But who knew that was a possibility given that you partnered with a startup? Most of which don't last more than three years. But anyway, uh, we'll talk about all that. Talk about missing out on Winston McKinney. Uh, we'll talk about Jack Grealish not making the squad briefly, uh, the England squad that is, and then him getting in because Rashford pulled out. Uh, but that happened after we recorded. So uh, anyway, Rob Maddox is joining the show this week. You can find Rob Maddox on Instagram at Rob Maddox underscore. Uh, if you don't already follow him there, you you should. Um, it's always great to talk to Rob. Nice to have him back on the show. And nice to have a full week's worth of news to talk about. And uh, before we get to that, if you haven't followed the Saints Archive yet, if you're not already a member of that Facebook group, if you're on Facebook, uh, you should get in there. You should familiarize yourself with the surroundings uh, because we're going to be doing some stuff. So I just want to plug that a little bit. Uh, you can also follow them on Twitter and Instagram. They are right here, and they are now uh, a partner of the show. So very, very happy about that. But that's enough of this. Let's get to the show now. Thank you again, as always, for listening, and I'll talk to you on the other side. I'd like to welcome back to the Southampton Delivery Podcast, Rob Maddox. You can find him on Instagram at Rob Maddox underscore. Uh, Rob, welcome back to the show. Um, it's been a little while, but, uh, you know, weather's changed, hopefully. Season's almost here, and uh, we actually have quite a bit to talk about. Yeah, it's been quite a busy week, for sure. It's um, It's been an interesting week, but it'll, it'll be good to talk about. Yeah, try to flesh everything out. I mean, we have some some things we've been waiting for for some time in terms of uh, Danny Ings getting uh, an England call-up and Ward Prowse getting back in the squad, but also uh, lots of other things, including squad numbers and uh, you know, missing out on transfers and everything else where we can talk about, we can talk about all that and then we'll get yeah. to some listener questions. But uh, before we do that, just, just how are you? How is, how's the summer treated you? How's lockdown treated you? And, and are you feeling like we're getting back to normal? Well, I mean, it's over in the UK. I'm sure everyone listening knows it's, it's been an interesting summer. Um, we went into lockdown obviously in March time and it, it started, it's, I wouldn't say get back to normal, but it's, it, you've been able to go out, go shopping, you know, um, go out to restaurants recently over the last couple of months. It's been, it's been decent. Um, I know it, it definitely, if you're from the UK, you would have been using the whole, uh, eat out to help out scheme. So 50% off in 
in most restaurants, which is you know a great scheme. Been, I've been completely abusing that. Um, but yeah, lockdown was all right. Just very bored until until the football was back on, and then every night there was there was a match to watch. It was almost perfect. But um, yeah, it, it's just it's just getting back to normality now. That's that's the problem. Yeah, it's it's going to be you know a, a slow process, and I think in in America we've gone kind of back and forth and back and forth, and we're starting to get there, but still got to eat. Uh, if you go to a restaurant, you got to be outside. I uh, got to wear a mask all the time, and it's just you know I'm teaching and I'm teaching to a room full of you know, emptiness and just some, some zoom boxes, uh, which is, mm. which is strange, but it, it is what it is. And, um, the only thing I would have asked is that, you know, had we somehow been able to play football for that whole time, we were, I was just sitting at home doing nothing. That would have been nice, but, yeah. uh, it's okay. It's almost back now. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes, but, um, you know, but before we get to, to saints actually getting to play a, a single match, we're going to have, uh, you know, Ings and, and Ward Prowse go off to, to England duty. And, you know, we talked about Danny Ings' chances of getting into the England squad um, for, for the Euros that were supposed to happen. And, you know, looking at striker options in England and, and who was actually going to be going to be better than him, uh, it looked like he was going to get in. And then obviously it gets pushed back a year and that maybe that maybe damages his chances a little bit. But um, I, I guess for you, this is this is deserved for him, correct? Oh, 100 percent. I mean. Anyway, anyone who's watched the England team for a while will know we normally set up in the four-three-three formation. So um, a lot of pressing is involved. With obviously the strikers that were called up, uh, obviously you got your, you know Harry Kane. Um, I know uh, Marcus Rashford was called up. We're more likely to use Rashford on the wing anyway, left wing. So that just leaves Kane and Ings really going for game time. So hopefully we we do get to see Ings actually get maybe forty-five minutes, ninety minutes under his belt. Um, against, I think it's Iceland and Denmark. It'll be, it'll be really good to see. Hopefully, he doesn't play too much. Where, you know, Danny's got dodgy knees, so you never know. He, he might turn up getting injured. That I think that's the worst case scenario for us at the moment. Yeah, I'd say that's my biggest fear. Is I, I definitely yeah. wanted him to to get into the squad, uh, especially when they were going into the Euros, because you you you've seen his progression and his um, his just kind of determination to get back to, to full fitness and get back to, to scoring. And he's been so, he was so good last season. And, and we kind of, you know, with the short break, you kind of hope it just carries over, but also with the short break, you worry about all of that time in his legs. And there were times when I was looking at Ralph going, please pull him out. Like, you know, we're either we're ahead or we're behind, or we just don't, we, you know, give him a break. And he was out there, but he stayed fit. And, um, I think Dan Schiller just did a piece in the athletic about uh, him, his work with Alex Parsons, his personal trainer and uh, how he's kind of keeping him fit and keeping him ready. And it's, it, it's great. I just hope that the, the change in training going from saints to England, because obviously it's not going to be exactly the same. And then the uh, you know, his maybe determination to prove himself in that setting. I just hope it doesn't come back to, to bite us and bite him uh, you know, just as a result of that, but you know, you just, you just hope he's safe and you hope he's, uh, you know, I want him to do well, but I also just want him to be healthy, you know? Uh, and I guess the worst case scenario would be, uh, him coming up against Hoiberg in the midfield or War Prowse coming up against Hoiberg in the midfield and, and Hoiberg maybe leaving something in, even though I'm, I don't want to accuse him of that because he, he's obviously, uh, I don't think he's that kind of player, but also, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to paint him in that light in any way. Yeah. I think that'd be, that will be pretty sneaky if he did that. Um, I think definitely when he if he if he did do something like that, and, um, I don't think he'd get the greatest reception. That's for sure. No, no. Uh, no. But it, it will be interesting seeing seeing Prowse and Ingsy come up against uh, coming up against Pierre uh, during the international break. So obviously they, they know him really in and out, and he's a definite starter for Denmark. Um, so it's it's going to be an interesting one to watch for sure. Yeah, and I guess looking at, at Ward Prowse as well. Obviously, he gets into the into the squad, and he had uh, a great year for us as well. Um, really kind of stepped up, took the armband, you know, has made that leap and maybe found his position under Ralph where we, for so long, we kind of argued and, and, and fought over where he should be and if he was good enough and all of these things. And he seems to have really solidified that spot. And now it's, who's going to play next to him in the midfield. That's really the question. And, you know, for him to, to get into the squad now, um, I mean, I'm really excited for him. He's rewarded with a new five-year deal and it looks like he's going to just, stay at saints and and just be you know one one of our one of one of the stars and one of the one of the people that we're gonna we're gonna talk about i guess for a long time and it's nice to it's nice to see him i guess be able to do that yeah i mean 
Krause, what, he's, he's, been, he's been here for, oh, I don't know how many years, but it's an awful long time. I, I know this new five-year contract is going to bring him past the 20-year mark for the club, which is absolutely exceptional. Um, Krause, I mean, for, for a boy born in he's done all right, hasn't he, for Southampton, <laughs> let's be real. Um, definitely. Uh, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be really nice to see him um, get back on the field, knowing he's got this new five-year deal under his belt. Because uh, I think when we had Pellegrino, Mark Hughes, those types of managers that just didn't really know where to put him. They didn't have a uh, certified plan for him. Under Mark Hughes and Pellegrino, we saw him play in a 4-2-3-1 on the right-hand side, which didn't really work. Yes, he's great at putting balls in the box uh, from dead ball situations, but I don't think he has the pace or the skill to really play on the wing. So it's quite refreshing seeing Ralph play him in this number six or this number eight role, whatever you want to call it, um, right in the middle of the park. Uh, if you saw against Swansea, obviously the, the highlights from that match, you can see Prowse, he, he runs into the box at, at every time we really get an opportunity, but he still gets back in time um, to be able to stop a counter-attack, which is really important in the way that we play. Yeah, and you talk about you know the England midfield and, and their formation, that 4-3-3 formation, so he's going to have to play a slightly different... Uh, you, you'd figure he'd be one of the more advanced midfielders. Mm. He won't be playing, I, I don't think anyway, at, at the base of midfield, but we'll have to see no. exactly kind of where Southgate plays him, but um, I mean, are you, are you worried at all about his fitness? I mean, he played, you know, more minutes than anybody else, ran more than anybody else, did all the things. And you would think that, you know, playing him playing another game or another two games won't bother him. But are you, are you, I mean, still the same. I think, I think the worry is always that, that somebody gets hurt and that's just not what we want, but we want these guys to, to obviously go and play and, and, and do well for themselves and for the country and, um, and, and represent the team that way. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in, in terms of where he's going to play under Southgate, I think Declan Rice, in, in a 4-3-3, I think Declan Rice is going to take the holding position. Um, I think Declan Rice is going to be the number six when we play. I think Prowsey will try and take on uh, Harry Winks for the number eight role. Um, obviously, it depends if, if Mount plays in, in, that, in that role as well. But uh, I, think, I think that's where he'll play in the number eight. Um, Obviously, yeah, we, we do want Prowse getting into the team. He completely deserves it. After captain in England uh, in the under-21s, the under-18s, he's captain England all the way through his career, really. Um, it's, it's quite surprising to me that he hasn't really been picked up much by Southgate beforehand, seeing as they have such a good relationship outside of school. Um, sorry, outside of football. <laughs> but it, it's going to be really interesting to see him actually get back out onto the field and see how he does play. Because he played last season for England and did a decent job for himself, so I, I hope that he can he can keep that going. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to look around the rest of the squad and feel like anybody else really missed out on the England squad. You know, I don't think Redmond had as great of a season as he needed to get in. If you look at that forward line yeah. for England, um, you know, Obafemi wasn't pleased with being left out of of the Ireland squad. So we'll have to see kind of how that goes going forward, and hopefully he comes back with something to to prove. Um, but and then there's of course Jack Grealish who was upset about not getting in, which yeah, I, I don't know how you feel. Um, I mean Grealish, Grealish is a sticky one. Um, personally, I don't think Madison is uh, Madison isn't in the squad. And I, I'm happy he's not. He didn't deserve to go in. Grealish, I, I I still think you have to put him in. His stats are off the charts for a team like Aston Villa's. I think even even if you don't play him, given the confidence of bringing him in, I think I think he's a better personally. I think he's a better player than Mason Mount. Um, who's in the squad? So it, it's 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 a really difficult one to be honest. Well, let's be honest, we just don't like Mason Mount. Like, ah, not really. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's fine. You know, if if Hoiberg's going to two foot somebody, that's the guy. Um, oh yeah. Feel not that it. I wish injury on anybody, but that's that's what, that's how I feel about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm super happy for those guys, and I think that they're going to you know hopefully you know go out and 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 make themselves proud and make us proud, and make the country proud, and I think that'll all be. That'll all be what we want as long as they come back healthy. Uh, I'll be happy for him, and and I, I really I do want them. I'll be I'll be upset if Hings doesn't play at all. If they, he gets there and then he doesn't mm. get any game time, I will I will not be super stoked on that. But we'll just have yeah. to kind of watch and see. Um, I, I, let's move on a little bit to to you know there were some changes going into the new season. Um, obviously the sponsor changed, and if you look on the club website right now, look at all the new squad numbers. Everybody's still dressed in in the old in the old kit, so. We'll have to see how that kind of kind of goes on it. Did you did you happen to buy the new kit uh, before? No. Before okay. So I uh, yeah I was I was going to and then I read about Lander Sports you know pulling away from Southampton. Um, I, I got my season ticket in, but I did not get a kit. 
thank God, because I think that sponsor's just, the old sponsor's just so ugly. It's actually awful. Horrible. Yeah. Well, last so year. I'm happy they got Yeah, so I was going to say, last year I wound up with the training kit, but with no sponsor on it. Um, mm. Which I think, I, I don't know if they were selling those like that all the way through or if it was just when I got it, but I'm, I was happy with that. Um, but I mean, what, what, what are your feelings on, I mean, I wrote about it in the, in the newsletter last week and I was quite angry, um, because I, I look at the club and they've been, they've, they've kind of put themselves in the situation by, by going for just that little bit of extra cash, uh, you know, to, to set the record deal. And now they've, they've partnered with, uh, you know, a startup company, which with no like English front facing website and granted, like the English speaking world is not maybe the largest population in the world. Like if you look at China and they're really trying to do stuff there and trying to grow there, you only need a small share of that market to really like expand, you know, because there's yeah. so, there are so many people, but that, that risk, I don't, I don't, I don't think was worth it. And now, you know, there, there's reported, there was a break clause in there. So LD sports is going to get out of the, uh, the contract without really having to pay compensation to us necessarily. And then it puts saints in a horrible spot, given that we had just released the kits. Uh, the season is two weeks away and, and now we're left scrambling for a, a cryptocurrency, um, casino with you know eight thousand Twitter followers. That's our main club sponsor, which I just it doesn't make me all that happy. Yeah, I mean, so in terms of, I, I think it's really split the fan base where you have obviously the new sponsor coming in, um, and obviously that's a better sponsor. So it can be shown on children's kits in the UK. That's a law you know, that can't be done. Um, most some fans are saying. Oh, it's a betting sponsor. I don't want that affiliated with my club. Other fans are like, it's cash. It saved our ass. We don't care. And if I'm honest, I, I kind of settle into the second half of that. Personally, I think we got screwed over by uh, LD. Uh -huh. I, it's something to do with how I think the Chinese aren't planning to show any live Premier League games. Um, apparently, that's what I'm hearing. So obviously, having a sponsor on a Premier League shirt when you're trying to influence your own appeal in China, it just doesn't work. Right. So... I think uh, the the new sponsor. I think it's the deal is worth in the region of four to five million pounds, mm -hmm. whereas with LD it was about seven and a half. So we we do lose a bit a bit of cash there. But the the thing to look at if if you're really against the betting sponsor is these guys are only going to be in for a year. There's no there's no way they'll be in for any longer than that. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a very because we we'd we'd originally worked with them in lots of different areas before that. Uh, obviously, we have eToro as one of our main partnerships now, uh, but it used to be, I believe it used to be um, Sportbet.io. Um, these guys have only been here for a year, and then I'm sure we'll find something a bit more solid, like a Virgin Media type. Um, personally, I was expecting Virgin Media to come in and fill the role, seeing as they already sponsor our women's kits, and they already sponsor our shirt sleeves as well. Yeah. But I do think the new sponsor has improved the look of the kit. Maybe the ethics behind it isn't great, but if I'm honest, they did really save us um, from losing about seven and a half million pounds. So we wouldn't have had any revenue. There would have been a drop. That, as Simon said in the interview with, with Adam Blackmore, uh, we wouldn't have been able to sign KWP. We wouldn't have been able to sign uh, Salisu at all. Uh, there's no signings without these little little pockets of money coming into the club. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's really it was really important that we got that sorted. So personally, I'm all for it. Okay. Well, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of the betting sponsor, but I mean, even talking to my wife, about it it's just there's just something about it and that, yeah. that doesn't doesn't make me all that happy but as you say the the money is important and i i do think that if you know if i could have chosen who the sponsor was going to be i would have i would have said you know you just you you take the loss of seven and a half million which i understand in coronavirus covid times is not really an option because you need every bit of revenue given that that, that match day revenue won't be what it has been in the past because you're not going to have people in the stands. You're not going to have people buying um, all of those things, uh, you know, at, at halftime or before the game or anything. And so that, that revenue stream is going to be down. So every other bit of revenue is going to be super important. Um, but I think, I mean, if you just, if, if they take the, the kit and just put the NHS on the front, don't charge them anything and just say, this is our sponsor. We're, we're, we're advertising this for the year. I think they would have won yeah. a lot of goodwill with people all over England, all over Southampton, and and that oh, would have yeah, been 100%. a thing. But this isn't a charity organization, and so I, I have to like put that aside. But that would have been if I could have said that. Yeah, that's what you do. That. That's what you do. Um, but I was trying to I was trying to look back. Uh, 
you know, uh, looking at essentially what we wound up losing out on was, uh, I think, 2.7 Jan Bednarak's, 1.04 Wesley Hoots, 0.97 Mario Lamina's, or three quarters of a, a Guido Carrillo. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's what we missed out on by, by LD Sports kind of walking away. So, um, you know, it is what it is, and we, we're going to have to kind of move forward with it. But um, as you said, the, the, at least the kids look better. Um, and, yeah. and so, I mean, that that is yeah. nice. So, uh, I don't know. And we look good playing in them yesterday, so I'll, t- I'll take that as well. Mm-hmm. Um I, I guess talking the other changes to the shirts uh, numbers uh, were, were all in and, and you can see kind of with the reshuffle and people leaving KWP gets a, gets number two Bertrand goes to number three Romeo goes to six JWP to eight Redmond to 11 Obafemi to 14 Valerie from 43 to 18 that one bugs me because I bought a, a jersey not for for our team but just to support a, a, a kind of a local team and they only had two numbers left because they were selling off the the match worn stuff, mm. and I chose forty three because of Valerie. And now I have a, just a number forty three. Yeah. Uh, what am I going to do with that? No one, no um, one's a forty three. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like I don't play, which is exactly what what it, what is the truth. So, um, small bone goes to twenty, and Saliso comes in uh, with with twenty two. Although we still haven't seen him actually uh, play yet. So, uh, you have issues with that? Is this is this kind of a, a normal thing? I, I think for American sports. I don't often see, at least baseball wise, guys change numbers. Those numbers are kind of there unless somebody comes in, like a big profile comes in, and then they wind up paying guys for for the number uh, when they get there. But for the most part, you know, the guys keep the same number if they're a star their whole career, kind of. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I thought um, so as well. Obviously, starting off at the top, Walker Peters from twenty four to two. I I thought twenty four suited Walker Peters. I can't lie. When he came in, I thought oh, 24, that's quite, that's quite a nice number. It just looked right. Okay. Um, but obviously, with, with Cedric leaving, number two came available. That obviously shows the Walker Peters will be our first choice right back next season, as he deservedly should be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely transformed our defense um, in the lockdown period. Bertrand's a weird one. Um, what's he been? Five, six years at the club now? Yeah. Um, under 21. Why, why now is he moving to number three? Of course, of course, Yoshida had that number throughout the career. If Bertrand's had that number for five, six years, it's very strange that he's changed. And he was he was dropping hints on his Instagram. Uh, he was commenting stuff like RB3, uh, which either could have meant, you know, new shirt number, or there's the rumors, obviously, of the new three-year contract extension, which would bring him up uh, at the club until he's 33 years old. Right, right. Um, Romeo to six, that one, I think that means that there's a good chance that Romeo's going to stay first choice for next season as much as I hate to say it I think he's a great player but it's looking less likely now with someone coming in and filling that gap in midfield Mm -hmm. Uh, there's still rumours flying about about Olivia um, Nuchum from Celtic and Oral Mangala from Stuttgart and all these all these different names are flying around obviously no credible sources just yet Um, but that one shows to me that Ralph's got Romeo in his plans as he should because he played really well after the lockdown period um Prowsey to eight, that makes me feel quite sad. Uh, I thought Prowsey was going to keep the 16, make it iconic, as Letitia did with the seven. It, I still, I'm still, i not used to seeing him in eight after the Swansea game. Um, just looks a bit wrong. And I, I guess the, the rest, really, Redmond moving, it's not really a surprise. Uh, 22 is cool, but you know, 11 is that wing, that wing and number. Yeah. And, and, and the rest, to be honest, doesn't really matter. I thought, personally... <laughs> I thought Salisi was going to come in at number six. Um, that would have been quite nice. But 22, I mean, go for it, mate, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I, I personally, I thought he was going to come in at six. Yeah, I, I guess the, the other thing is there are people who miss out on numbers and don't get them, and, and we kind of all mm. understand what that means. And it's no secret that, that guys like Wesley Hoot and Guido Carrillo aren't in the plans. Um, but, uh, you know... A surprise at all for you or, or or not really because we kind of knew there's no reason for them to be back at the club yeah it's i mean obviously what you've got uh, simsy you got mcqueen uh will ferry Yank yankowitz uh obviously wesley who lamina reed career um yeah i mean with with wesley um there's rumors about him going about the belgian uh belgium there's there's so, there's so many things flying around uh lamina and reed apparently are off to fulham again reed has a Option to buy with his loan deal in at Fulham. Lamina apparently he might be going now on a loan with an obligation to buy. We don't know that yet. Um, 
but they're obviously not in Ralph's plans. That's very obvious to see. Um, I was kind of hoping to see Lamina come back into training, see if Ralph can sway his attitude. Um, but if I'm honest, ever since he posted that compilation on Twitter, I haven't been too impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll, it'll be interesting. I mean, if, if they're on loan, they won't play against us. Um, no. You know, so there, there is that. Uh, but, you know, given the way that Lamina has played in some games, you know, it, it might have been to our benefit to have him on the field, but we'll we'll see. And, you know, you know that talent is there. It's just, it's so inconsistent and you kind of wonder when he's going to show it. But, um, you know, it, and I think one of the contingencies on that, uh, the obligation to buy is they have to stay up, right? And he's got to play at least 20 matches, which we'll yeah. see. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, that, that, uh, you know, he's got to stay, he's got to stay healthy. But, I mean, if you look at that Fulham team and then you put, you put Reed and, and Lamina next to each other in midfield. You think you think they probably do stay up? I, I, I guess. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't know how people are feeling about about them. And uh, I think last time they spent a bunch of money and it didn't work out. So we'll have to just kind of watch them <laughs> and, and, and see. So yeah, Fulham's going to be interesting next season for sure. Be interesting to see who gets booked more, Mitrovic or Romeu. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be it. <laughs> yeah, I guess we got to <laughs> got to do that. But um, I, I guess on on the topic of midfield, we missed out on one. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of Saints fans hoping that uh, Winston McKinney was going to come in and people asking me, you know, what, what, what do we think? And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't watch the Bundesliga very often. Uh, I don't watch Schalke ever. Uh, they were not very good. Um, when I watch uh, him for the, for the U S men's national team, you know, I, I, I like him. He's definitely raw still. He's still young. Um, but, but I, I, I will say that I, I'm a little disappointed that he, he chose to go to Juve, although, you know, it's hard to say that because I mean, Juventus is a huge club. Uh, yeah. He's going to go play alongside, or you know, I guess behind Ronaldo. He's going to learn under Pirlo, and and but I just think you know he could have been a player that that Ralph really could have developed, and then he probably still would have had the chance to go to Juve. Only he would have been able to go to Juve maybe more uh, with the I guess the vision of walking into the first team and, and really having yeah. a spot. Rather now he's going to go there and probably not play you know, as consistently as he would have as if he would have came to Saints. Yeah, Weston McKenney, um, I'm in I'm in a Southampton group chat and everybody loved the idea of Weston Weston McKenney coming to Southampton. I mean, the guy is twenty one years old. He's a very as you said, he's a very raw player, but from looking at reports and looking at um what Schalke fans say about him, um he does look like the kind of player that's very versatile. He does look like the kind of player that Ralph can really switch up. So you remember, obviously, when Ralph came in, we've had, you know, Prowsey's really come out and he's, he's his new number number eight. Um, and he's, he's, he's turned him more into a, into a man's player, I think, than what he was. He's bulked him up a bit. It's, it would have been the same with McKenney, I think. It's a shame. 20 million for him. Um, I still don't really understand the Juventus situation. Obviously, money talks. He's going to be on 120000 a week to sit on the Juventus bench which, of course, we would never be able to offer him anything right, near right. that. But what we would be able to offer him is a pathway, a proven pathway to the first team. Obviously, he'd walk right into our squad um, and fill that Hoiberg position uh, nicely. But it's, it's, it's just a shame because we would have given him so many opportunities. Of course, we wouldn't have been able to offer him the same amount of money. But I think Juventus have really made this signing not for the player, but for the media coverage this is going to give them in America. Mm-hmm. Because obviously the U.S. men's national team is any player, like for example Pulisic. I know I know loads of people when I went over from America who know who Pulisic is <laughs> and support Chelsea or Dortmund because of Pulisic. Right. It would have been it would have been the same situation with Weston McKenney, who arguably is one of their you know bigger name players. Obviously you have Adams and Jamie Sands coming up, but um, Weston McKenney really I mean playing over in in, in Europe already. At 21, um, I think he, he. I think we've really missed out on a player there. Obviously, he was in the finished article, but we never buy finished articles. We make finished articles. That's right. the difference between us and Juventus. Um, but yeah, it's a sad one. But I'm interested to see what the club can do. Um, there's a, there's a couple of players I have on my wish list, but I don't think we'll get. Um, but yeah, I think it's just it's just a shame, really. I think he's I think he's made the wrong career decision there. Yeah, I, I I do as well, and I, maybe it's just me being bitter, but that that is true. Yeah, probably. Yeah, same here. But you, you mentioned, uh, you know, Saints fans kind of knowing, or, or just sorry, just American fans knowing uh, Pulisic, and 
uh, you know, Dortmund and Chelsea. And, and there's a lot of fans my age and a little bit older in, in America that are, that are Everton fans or Fulham fans because of the players we've had go through those places. And so, mm. um, you know, there is that, that idea there, but I, I kind of think too, like the people that are, that are watching the men's national team now, they're probably clued into, to a team already. And I know a lot of people disagree with me on that. And so I'm not sure how much it would have improved our, um, our, our, our standing, I guess, but, um, you know, he, he'd have to have a couple of big games, I think for the national team to be, and, and be playing with us for us to really gain a lot from it. But any, anything is, I mean, if you look at the kind of the map of us saints fans, they, we're, we are very spread out. <laughs> so yeah, uh, any kind of filling yeah. in the, in the, in the gaps would have been great. Um, and I am going to, you know, I, I would love for us to have a good us men's national team player on the team, just as a, as, as a per, from a personal perspective, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to see, and we'll have to see when he gets game time. You know, is he is he going to get game time in in the league when you know they're already you know you know pulling away, yeah. running away with the title, or is he, is he going to play in the early parts of the Champions League? Well, we'll just have to kind of kind of see uh, how that how that goes. Yeah, that that's that's really what I don't understand is because obviously Perla, this is going to be his first management position. Obviously, mm-hmm. well, he was with the under twenty three team for ten days or something, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then he got called up to the first team. Whereas Ralph is a Bundesliga manager, where Messi McKenney spent most of his life in Germany anyway, playing in, under Bundesliga. So he's used to the whole pressing style. Um, he, he'd come in and slot right in. I don't think he'd need that much catching up. Right. Uh, obviously, Ralph had a different gravy from everyone else, as we can obviously see. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I do, think, I, do, I do think we really missed out on a player that would have just slotted right in and just done the job. Yeah, yeah, that's and you know it it, it it sucks, but we'll watch him now and we'll see how he gets along and, and yeah. there there will be more. We'll 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 have people we'll we'll hopefully bring in. Uh, yeah. Although you know, I I kind of wonder if if there was ever really a, a chance he was actually coming. You know, I I really Ooh, I still wonder yeah. how how real that link was and if if they used us because we it it almost seems too perfect. He fits, you know, he ticks all the boxes for a player that Southampton would like to sign. And we tick all the boxes for a player of his caliber in at his age with his kind of the, the things that he still needs to develop and work on. We seem like the perfect fit. And so you use that, you know, agents use that or whatever as a uh, as a way to get the hundred and twenty thousand dollar a week thing to go learn yeah. from. Pirlo. Hopefully, though, um, there's a clip that goes around on Twitter sometimes of, of Pirlo when he's playing uh, for NYCFC uh, and he's he's supposed to be defending. It's a corner and he's supposed to be defending the front post and he's literally just leaning on the post. Watches the ball go over his head. Uh, the other team scores, and he just like kind of walks away. <laughs> There's just no effort. It's like the man had a glass of wine and was just hanging out watching the game. Um, and and obviously he's a much different player than McKinney is, so I don't know what it is, but you know he's definitely got mm. something to to teach uh, all of us because you know he he was a very, a very good player, and so I don't want I don't want to discount him, but it's just the work ethic is not is <laughs> much different. Yeah, from, it's not there yeah. from from Ralph. You know uh, the intensity <laughs> level, I guess. Um, I, I guess looking, we, we kind of talked about Reed and, and Lamina going to Fulham. Uh, the other kind of question around the squad right now is is with Gunn, with with Forster coming back, and you know the team coming out and or the club coming out and saying he wants to stay, uh, he's going to uh, fight for a spot. That likely means that we got to lose somebody. You don't really see Alex McCarthy, who's been the number one, going out on loan, so it kind of defaults to to Gunn having to go out and, and do that. I mean, do you? I guess we spent this money on him. We gave him a shot. He didn't really, hasn't done it necessarily for us. Do you think that the loan move is the right thing for him to do? I mean, he's still young as a keeper, but but what what are your thoughts on on, on him potentially going away? And then what, what his I guess chances to come back into the squad next season or whatever, and and really try try to establish himself here again. So it it's, it's, it is a difficult one uh, with the goalkeepers we currently have. Uh, I think Alex McCarthy. I think everything I can say that he is, he's really impressed um, last season. When Gunn got dropped, I think Maka came in and he was really solid. Obviously, just before lockdown, we had the Newcastle game, which obviously we did lose. Um, he had a save pen, uh, he you know saved a penalty and had a triple save. Uh, and then during during lockdown, um, the Man City game where we won at home, uh, absolutely fantastic display from him again. And we're seeing these more consistent saves. Like against Bournemouth, we had the Harry Wilson chance. 
you know, it's, it's all these all these saves that really are showing that actually, okay, Alex McCarthy, number one, sounds fair enough. Um, obviously, we have Fraser coming back in from Celtic, who had a decent spell out there. Uh, he had a couple games where he played really, really well. Of course, um, Fraser is still tied down to his contract until 2022. Um, so it's, it's about right we kept him, I think. I think, um, I think keeping Fraser was right. But I just feel for Angus Gunn because he was, when we signed him, when he was 20, I think he was 22 or 23, mm-hmm. he was tipped to be, okay, this is, this is the next breed of English, of English goalkeepers. Yeah. Because uh, we always have, have these goalkeepers come through, like, you know, Dean Henderson's now currently, I think, fine for the number one position. But we had Angus Gunn, who we bought, I think it was 12 or 13 mil from uh, Man City, uh, who came in. I can't remember what length of contract he signed with us, but I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know whether we should give him a second chance. But then again, I look at the stats and he was on, on record, he was the second worst goalkeeper in the Premier League. Just above um, Kepa Rizabalaga, <laughs> <laughs> which is you know the eighty million pound man. So it, it, it's it's a difficult one because you don't know whether to give give Gunny another chance or just load him out to maybe I know Leeds are interested. A couple of Championship clubs have been sniffing around. I'm hearing, um, but personally, I would like to see Fraser come back into the fold. I think it, I think it'll be quite nice for him to sum up his Southampton career with a bit of return. Um, but I don't want to see anyone else apart from Alex McCarthy start against Crystal Palace because he, he deserves the number one shirt. There, there can be no discretion about that. He deserves the number one shirt. Fraser's got to earn that shirt and if Angus wants to stay and fight for it, he's got to earn it as well. Um, but it's, it, again, it's, it's a sticky one because we still have Harry Lewis. Mm-hmm. I don't know what way he's doing at the moment. Is he kicking about in the under-23s? I haven't really heard much from him. Obviously, he did get a shirt number. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sticky one. Yeah. Uh, well, transfer marks currently asking me which which keeper I prefer, Angus Gunn or Harry Lewis. I'm just not going to click anything. Um, yeah. But I mean, according to transfer mark, the the market value for Angus Gunn is is cut in half from what we paid for him. Uh, you know, when we got him from from Man City to to what it yeah. is now. So his contract is with us until uh, 2023. So um, okay, he still okay. he still has three years on it. And and so even if he loses a year here, going out on loan, maybe that doesn't some good. He still has two seasons. Or really, you know, it's one season to come back and determine what you're going to do before we probably sell him off or or time down again if he's going to be the, the the guy of the future. But uh, we'll just have to kind of. Uh, I, I guess the best thing probably for him is to go out on loan somewhere. Hopefully, it's a top flight team somewhere. You know, I don't really want to see him yeah. go anything lower than the championship because I think he needs to to play at the Premier League level because we've seen that he can do it elsewhere. We just need him to do it um, at, at the level that we're at to prove that he, uh, you know, gets his confidence back. And, and we saw what Forster did. Forster went away, he got his confidence back, and now he's coming back and, and really is, is ready to fight. So the, the, it can happen. I think we're just, we just have to wait and see if it, if it does. Um, but yeah, and, and I, I think that's really the, the, the question for me is we still have these guys on the books that we signed, you know, big, long contracts or sign them on big, long contracts or contract extensions even. And, and we need to get rid of them and I don't think he's there yet because I still think at his age, there is the, the chance for him to kind of regain some of that value that we, that we paid for him and maybe even make us a little bit of money in the long run. But it's just going to take it's going to be a longer game with him rather than some of these guys where I wish we would just cut ties with him and move on. Yeah, it's not, he's, he's definitely not a career. He's, um, he's, he's only 24, which for a keeper is very young. Um, obviously, we've still got Macker and Fraser who are in their 30s now playing for us. Um, I do think a loan move would be good for him, definitely. Uh, you know, you're completely right. He can't, he can't drop down to the championship, I don't think, or anything lower than that because he needs to be tested. And I think, I think we should make sure that the team that he goes to play him as their majority number one so he gets as much game time as possible. I do have a feeling if he does go to somewhere, the only links at the moment really are Leeds United, which... I mean, he'd, he'd suit them, I think. Um, it would be interesting to see see how, how they get on next season, of course, with Fulham. Uh, but I, th- I think he'd be number one there for sure. Even yeah. If he went to Leeds. Yeah, and just going back to the Fulham thing, uh, this is coming from Get French Football News. Uh, they say it's going to be a loan for 2 million, uh, 2 million euros from Southampton. Um, they'll yeah. be obligated to buy for 6 million. I mean, you just think of what we paid for him and how long yeah, he's been ridiculous. here. It's 
that's that's rough um yeah that is that's yeah but hey we, we have mean, to get off the books yeah yeah and when, when you put up a compilation video of not you that's what i guess that's what you get um yeah. so anyway yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't belittle him too much even though i think he's brought it on himself um yeah but yeah you know, there it is but um I, I guess let's let's talk a little bit about the uh the friendly that that happened um mm. i mean obviously behind closed doors but that goes without saying at this point uh the yeah. the goals i just kind of tweeted just just put this on repeat because it was so good and so fun to watch just the team just be you know uh, kind of look free flowing and, and swansea were a team that were challenging for promotion last year so you would think like like surely you're not that bad but they they looked i mean we made them look terrible maybe they are terrible maybe they weren't full strength or whatever but um i'm really happy with the performance from yesterday yeah, it was it was really nice to see the boys hit seven faster. I think um, obviously there was two sixty minute matches, but um, I think Swansea's first thirty. I think that was their kids. I have a feeling it was their kids because there's no way a team who's you know <laughs> trying to get promoted can concede seven goals in thirty five minutes. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really nice to see Ty Adams continue his scoring run. Um, it was I think the so our first. 30-minute team was Maka, Walker Peters, Stevens, Bednarek, Bertrand, Romeo, Prowsey, Stu, Redders, uh, Che, and Ingsy. I think that will be, if we don't sign anyone else, I think that will be what we'll, with what we start with against Palace. Um, I was, I guess every Saints fan was really hoping to see Mohamed Salisu come in. Mm-hmm. However, I, I've heard from people that he is currently training on his own. Um, due to an injury he picked up um, in his last couple of games over in the Liga, yeah. and he's still trying to get up to the fitness speed. Uh, obviously, the Ralph Ball uh, need, needs you to be out, which is quite quite a high tempo. Uh, but it, yeah, you're right. It was just really nice to see, you know, Bertrand on the score sheet, Ingsy with two goals, Prowsey with two goals. It was it's just really good to see, um, especially in a preseason friendly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess, do you have a favorite goal? Uh, from from the match, is there one that, that, that you like the best? I I would say, well, best goal goes to Bertrand. No doubt about that. That was a great goal. Mm. I think Ingsy's second was my personal favorite. I do like it when he cuts in off the off the left, bends yeah. it into the bottom right. Yeah, it's just really nice to look at. And I, I, again, I'm really happy that Chase scored. I think he needs to continue this throughout preseason, which he did last season and then just didn't score. But I think if he obviously he's coming off the back of four goals, uh, or sorry, th- yeah, four goals in some like uh, five, six games. Um, I'm, I, I really hope he can kick on next season. I, I want to see him score some more because we're supposed to be playing Coventry on Tuesday, apparently. That's rumoured. We're playing Coventry on Tuesday in a preseason friendly as well. Obviously, the, the show will be out by that point, but uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see and, ho- and see who, mm. who goes. I mean, we may be missing uh, a couple of, of players by that point because of uh, international duty, so we'll have to see who steps in there, and that'll maybe give yeah. us a clue as to, to what the, the pecking order is. Um, actually, we probably already know who's going to do a small bono play next to Romeo, so like, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think watching the goal, the, the first goal, uh, looks like a you know obviously we just get the the highlights but a, a long ball to Walker Peters who uses his strength and his speed to to get to the ball and just not really do anything fancy just just lay it off into the middle I don't know why the keeper's not coming for that or or anything he just seems like he's kind of rooted to his line and and Adams is just outpaced everybody to 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 slot at home but I'm I'm happy with that that display from Walker Peters more than anything else there um, I think the second goal is maybe a little bit of a, a of a mess just a ball gets kind of caught up and. And whatever, and then uh, I think it's, I think it's that's that's Redmond's goal, I think. Yeah, but the ball just kind of falls just to just him, and he, in. he puts it away. Um, I think third goal is a penalty that Armstrong draws. It's just a terrible challenge. Ings puts it away though, and and I think my favorite goal though is is the Redmond goal, just because I, I don't know uh, the, the crossbar yeah. looks nice when it when you hit it like that. Oh you know? yeah, it's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a very good finish. Yeah, I'm just watching it for the you know the millionth time here. It, it's a good yeah, run and a nice pass from Redmond, and then I guess the the run from Ings for for his second goal was also really nice, and the vision there uh, to to find that pass from deep is is good. So um, I don't know. I'm just really impressed with with the way we looked, and like you said, it's probably the the, the children for Swansea, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm yeah, just I'm seven, just mad we seven, conceded seven seven goals and seven goals, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't, can't complain. Yeah. 
but it wasn't nine and they'll, they'll, they'll tell us all that. So there you go. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, um, we have a couple of listener questions and, and we'll kind of wrap this up. So some of the questions came in from Instagram. Uh, one of them comes from Saints World, um, who's at underscore Saints World underscore. Uh, you can get a lot from them on the website. Uh, a lot of partners, a lot of articles up that you can you can kind of follow along. Um, and also on on Twitter and Instagram, they are they are growing, so you can give them a follow if you if you wish. Um, but it says their question says, "How far can Ralph take us? Uh, how long do you see him actually staying with us realistically?" Uh, so I just kind of just very quickly looked at. Uh, contract so he he signs a contract until uh, june of 2024 he signed that contract in, in december of 2018 his average length of stay at a club is about 1.86 years he's been with us about 1.67 years so i doubt he leaves i think he's gonna he's definitely gonna extend or, or, or outlast that unless something horrendous happens but you know what it seems like we're starting to build something with ralph it seems like he's committed. It seems like the club is willing to give him the, um, I guess the, the authority to do the things that he thinks are right. And they're giving him that freedom. And he's, as long as he's kind of backed in the transfer market, I think we will continue to, to go forward with that. But uh, what are your thoughts on that, on that question? Well, I think Ralph, um, first of all, I think everyone can agree he's done an absolutely excellent job, uh, especially this season. Um, I'm not going to go over it again because everyone's heard the same story. I'll, we lost 9-0, we backed the manager, and the way we are, we finished 11, three points off of 10. Um, but, yeah, I think where, where he can take us is an interesting one. I think it, depend, it all depends really on where we finish next season, because I think every Saints fan is wanting another European tour, um, which would be absolutely amazing if we could get that. Um, but definitely a top 10 finish. Um, I think Ralph can take us, take us to Europe. Um, if we back him again in the transfer market, if Simmons and Crocker give him, you know, free will and the financial backing that he needs in order to get our team up to that standard, um, I think he has all the tactics, and I, I, I think his philosophy is great. We're a real team with a real philosophy of high pressing football, which is what we used to play under, you know, Kuman. Um, but I get the feeling he is going to stick with us for a while. I think he really does enjoy enjoy the development here. Um, and I get, I get, I get a better feeling from him than I did with Ronald Koeman. With Koeman, I don't think he engaged with us fans as much as Ralph has. Um, I don't think Koeman um, particularly was as uh, thoughtful to the players as Ralph is. I think Ralph's got genuine connections with with the players, uh, which is really good to see. Mm-hmm. And he's concentrating on bringing through our homegrown talent as well. So he's still keeping the philosophy of the club. Obviously, Will Ferry was in the squad against Bournemouth. Unfortunately, he didn't come on, but we gave Nathan Teller a start against Norwich. Um, Jankowicz has been in the, in, in, the, um, in the squad quite a lot. And, and you've, you've got lots of players like Tyreek Johnson, for example, uh, who's, I think he's off on loan in the States, I think, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hartford obviously, Athletic he, with he, he was giving a start. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think he can sit with us until you're the league, if we can get there, which would be great to see. Yeah, yeah. I bring up Kuman there, not to completely derail this conversation but obviously his mm. his relationship with certain players isn't as great uh given that he's gone to uh barcelona and basically just called a bunch of really good players and said like you're not in our plans and so yes, you know, water, yeah yeah which uh you know you better watch his back he might get bit in the shoulder or something um <laughs> uh but i mean you know I mean, kuman does seem like a cold character like he just doesn't seem like a very like a, a very jovial person it seems like he's all business which i, I totally like appreciate um mm. But Ralph also seems like that, but he also seems like he can actually kind of laugh and, and he gets along with the, the guys and he understands. He maybe takes that time to develop those personalities because if you're going to demand people play this hard for you, you have to, there has to be something about you to get, that gets people to do that, you know? Um, otherwise, you just run out of, of, of juice after about a year and a half or two years and then nobody likes you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a difficult one, but, you know, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope he can keep his energy levels up and just, just stick with us because... Yeah. I think he's he's been through the the biggest rough patch any manager could really take at the moment. Yeah, we're still we're still backing him, so it's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got another question from uh, Bryce underscore Lee underscore two thousand two. Um, it's a big fan from Australia. He says uh, his question says, "Who do you think needs a good season the most?" Um, so I, I think just looking around the squad, and I think there's two ways we can address this. Like from a personal standpoint, which player needs to, I guess 
you know, maybe they dipped a little bit last year, or maybe they need to just continue to build on it. And, and, and there are a lot of people who could, you know, internationally establish themselves. You talk about Ward Prowse or Ings, uh, but you look at maybe guys who dipped a little bit uh, in, in Redmond or, or Armstrong who came on strong at, towards the end of the year last year, um, who could really do it. But I guess if you had to pick one player that you just said like this, they need to have a, a, for, from a personal standpoint, a very good season, who, who would you say it is? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I have two people in mind. Um, I have Gineppo and Bufau in mind. I think this is, we said it last season, when I personally thought Bufau would really kick on last season. I thought he'd get a couple more goals under his belt. Um, personally, I think Musa. I think Gineppo, um, lots of people would say probably Inzi, Prowzi, you know, uh, Pr- um, Bertrand maybe, you say Romeo. Yeah, you maybe but, go Stevens. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, Musa, I think if he can get his name onto the team sheet in a couple games and really impress, I think that, you know, he can become one of our starting tens. Obviously, Redmond and Armstrong are very technically gifted. They're both fantastic. I love them both. But I think Musa is, what, only 21, 22. If he can really kick on um, this season, it will really put him in a good space for next season. Because Redmond isn't getting any younger. I mean, he's not old at all. He's, he's nearing his 27th birthday now. He's not, he's not old. He's in his prime. Right. But I think if, if Musa wants a bit more game time now, he can concentrate on not getting injured. And, um, and just, just doing what we saw at the start of the season, I, I really want to see him more in the team. Sure, I think every Saints fan does, because uh, he just gives us that extra bit of spice. But I, I don't think we signed Musa to just be a super sub. No. Um, it would be, be good to see him get some first-team football, but to be honest, at the moment, I can't see us taking Redmond or Stu out of the starting eleven because they're both vital to the way we play. Yeah. No, no. I think I think he's he's got to he's got to be there and stay. Uh, and you talk about Redmond. You know this the next contract he signs will be the the big one, you know? So if, uh, if the team are going to continue their kind of uh, their method or model of, of self sustaining the, the guys, he, his contract's up in 2023. So we maybe have this season, maybe one more. And then if he's going to leave, which I don't want him to leave, but if he's going to go, no. that'll be when it happens. And, and so you have a guy like, like Genevo and then you need him to kind of step into that gap and, and, and fill that role. So uh, it will be, um, important for us to kind of to kind of see that 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 kind of happen, um, and I, and I guess now like from a from a team standpoint, I guess obviously we relied so much on Ings last year, and if he falls off, just I mean just a little bit, maybe if he scores fifteen goals, that's that that may have an impact, and I think that would also be a, just a fantastic return for for a striker in the Premier League for him to score 15, 15 goals for us yeah. would be great. But like you know, so I guess who else in the team in order for us to to really to have the best year possible. They, like, I guess which player, if they have the, if they have the a career year, will make the team the best uh, in terms of our on-field success. Uh, whew, Good um, luck well, as think, well. I'm just going to sit here I'm, and let you yeah, deal that's with a that. Question. I want to throw Chad and I want to throw him into the ring personally because he's 24 now. We signed him last season. He scored four goals. Um, I think if he can get. 15 and I know I know um if Dan and Sam are listening to this I know that they they absolutely adore Jade a bit but um if he can kick on and can get double figures I think that will be really really important for us um because obviously Danny Danny did amazing (laughs) you know I'm not going to say Danny you know did bad but he did really well last season to get 22 goals if we can throw maybe an extra 10 goals into that season we are looking at a top top 10 slash Europa League push. Yeah. If if Che if Che can kick on and really form a solid partnership with Danny, I think that's what I'm more looking for, a solid partnership up there. Because uh, we mainly saw Che play along with um with Mikey over Femi. Uh, yeah. last season obviously you had Chelsea away. That, that that was a good game. Um but I think with Longy signing the two year deal, we're now looking at him taking a step back and letting Che really start more with Danny now that he's kicked on in the in, in the post lockdown season. Mm-hmm. Um it'll be good to see them have a really good partnership that can build. Um but yeah but then you can throw Stevens in the hat, can't you? You can say, oh well we've just signed Salisu, so see Stevens really needs to step up because I think he'd be the name that we take out instead of Bednarek. Mm-hmm. Um there's there's so many players that you think you really do have the potential to be world class. 
but you just got to get your head down and just work for it. Yeah. Um, there's so there's so many players I could say, but personally for me, I would say I really want to see a good relationship between Danny Ings and Che Adams. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just just tweeted right now as well. Uh, apparently, we're looking to sign Danny Ings to a two year contract extension, which will put him at the club until 2024, which would be good. Um, he's 28 at the, at the, at the moment. So, uh, you look, he'll be 32 at that point. That's probably the, that's, yeah, that's the, done. the best part of his career there. So, um, we can, we just hope that he's, he's there. I'm, I actually, I thought he was a little older than that already, but I'm glad he's not. Um, but I think that that pretty much wraps it up, um, for, for now, unless you have something else you, you'd like to talk about, Rob. No, I, I think we really covered everything that's happened this week. It's been, it's been quite a busy week with our football, the Saints. Yeah. Um, I think mainly from what I want left in this transfer window, uh, I'd love to see Krause and Ings not get injured. Um, I would love to see us sign a promising young since mid to come in um, to play next to next to Krause. Uh, another maybe another ten might be nice, um, but I'd love I'd absolutely adore to see um, us kind of try and shift some of this deadwood up the club because that's really taken up our wages. I think if we can do that, bring in a couple more players, that's going to be really, really important to the season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. you know, it looks like they're trying to do that. If Lamina does go to Fulham officially, uh, that will be nice. Um, I'm sure by the time people hear this, actually, that that, that we'll have more clar- clarification on that. But, um, mm. you know, we still have other guys that need to have things taken care of. And, um, you know, especially Hoot and, and Carrillo and, and guys like that. And I think once that happens, that's a whole era of Saints that wasn't very fun for, I don't think anybody. I don't think the players, oh, I don't think, cool. I don't think the fans, I don't think anybody really enjoyed that period. Um, so it'll be nice to have that period kind of done and gone and, and be officially in the, in the Ralph era uh, mm. of things. And, 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 and of course the, the new era with the, the new leadership um, off the pitch as well. That's um, you know, not owner wise, but uh, backroom staff wise and, and uh, executive wise, I think things are, are, are a lot better than they were. Um, assuming we get rid of this this betting sponsor at some point, and you know, do yeah, some, of do course. something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I highly doubt they'll be the next season. No, oh, and well, and they were they were Watford's main kit sponsor last year. Of course they were, yeah. And they are sure. this year as well. But I think the only reason they can sponsor us is because Watford were relegated. Um, yeah, and they want to keep probably that Premier League. Thing. And I and I actually checked a Watford website. They they do they are still the sponsor. They you can buy a kit with you know, whatever it is, bet.io uh, on there. So, so uh, mm. you know, I'm not a, I'm not a cryptocurrency fan, but you know, everybody does their own thing. So it's all good. It's all good here. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, Rob, I want to thank you very much. If people want to follow you on Instagram, they can do that. Uh, you're at Rob Maddox underscore. Uh, but thanks again, man. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, have to yeah, get you on course, during the season when we're, uh, you know, hopefully playing well. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I would. Yeah, I hope we kick on. Let's not have a repeat of last year for sure. But mm. no, yeah, th- thank you for having me on again. We'll have to come on whenever. But it was, uh, it's been an interesting week, and it was good to really wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon, and, and thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem, mate. No worries. And that does it for this week's episode of the Southampton Delivery Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it show would not be possible without the guests of the show so thank you very much to rob maddox you can find him on instagram at rob maddox underscore if you don't already follow him there you should and the show would also really not be the same without the listeners of the show so thank you to you as well thanks for tuning in for sharing reviewing uh, i really do appreciate it if you are enjoying it please continue to share it with uh your friends who you think might enjoy it leave a review on itunes that way other people who might enjoy it will see it and then if they think you like it they'll actually maybe like it more. Um, I guess it's how it works. I'm not sure. Patrons of the show also have a lot to do with making sure this keeps going. So thank you to all of you, including the newest patron of the show, Daniel Crouch. Uh, Daniel, thank you for your contribution. I look forward to talking to you soon uh, on the private messaging channel that we have for patrons. In addition, uh, there you can submit your questions for the show and you will have priority for having them answered each and every week. It's a pleasure to be able to partner with and support so many great outlets and organizations. Please follow the Southampton page on Instagram and Twitter. They are at Southampton page on Twitter and at Southampton page one on Instagram. 
and the Saints Archive. The Saints Archive is the place you can go for everything having to do with the club's history. Um, get in there, get involved in the discussion, uh, learn a lot, share some memories. That's what it's all about. Uh, you can find links to all of those in the show notes. So please do not hesitate to go and uh, enjoy yourself and learn and uh, just kind of share in, in this club that we all really love and enjoy. All music for the show comes courtesy of the Free Music Archive at freemusicarchive.org. The intro song is Epic Song by Boxcat Games, and the end of show credits that you're listening to right now is Aim is True by Pottington Bear. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week. And uh, as always, until next time, we're going to together. We march on. kids.